Welcome back to Table of Entrepreneurs. Let's jump right into it. Today, we're going to be talking about strategies for mastering sales, right? As always, I got my notepad right here to make sure that I stay on track. What I'm thinking about doing, man, in the future is probably getting a whiteboard um, or a dry erase board or something like that. And then I can actually put the notes up on the wall. So I may end up changing the background, doing things a little bit different. Hey, by the way, if you're new to the channel, man, much love. I appreciate you for coming out, for checking out, taking the time. Um, if you're not yet subscribed, please go ahead and do so. Um, that helps me know that I'm doing the right thing. And I want to continue bringing great content to you all. Um, go ahead and like, leave comments, man. How do you think I'm doing with these videos? What can I be doing better? What type of videos would y'all like me to do? What type of things would y'all like to hear? I'm really open to criticism, uh, so go ahead and drop it below, right? If you're interested in investing, uh, go ahead and link in the description below. I got a link to Weeble. Go ahead and get yourself some free stock. Hey, so again, we're talking about strategies for mastering sales, right? I got about seven things for you today. Go ahead and get your notepads, get your phone, and let's get into it. First thing is eliminate anxiety, right? When I say eliminate anxiety, I'm talking about for you and I'm talking about for the customer, right? Because sometimes buying or, you know, going into a sales could be very, very a big deal for, for both parties, right? As a salesperson, as a uh, business professional, you may be anxious, right? Let's say I'm starting a lawn business, right? And I go up to somebody's house and I'm like, hey, listen, um, I was driving through the neighborhood. I noticed that your lawn was unmaintained, you know, and I open up a lawn service. You know, this is this is the products I'm able to provide. These are the service I'm able to do. You know, these are my prices or whatever, blah, 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 blah. You know, you get into that. Sometimes that can be real nerve wracking because sometimes we get into our own mind and we tell ourselves, uh, that our value is less than we really that in what, what it really is. Uh, you'd be really you'd be really amazed and, and surprised at what you're able to get accomplished and what you're able to do when you really just put yourself out there. So eliminate the anxiety, right, for you and for the customer, right. It's a big purchase for them. It may be a commitment, a subscription-based uh, process, and they may be nervous to do it, right, because how can I really trust this person, right? Because you, you're still in that new process of the relationship, right? Unless you've done a really, really good job of overcoming uh, some objections, which may have not even occurred yet, um, then there could be some huge anxiety still in that. And this is usually occurring in the first part of the co uh, conversation, right? When you first walk up and introduce yourself to somebody or, you know, the conversation is just not beginning. Um, you know, you want to kind of breathe, let it loose. And this is why practicing role playing and all those other things like that can be really beneficial for you. I also like to say score a small yes throughout. Get them in the yes rhythm, right? I love doing that through sales. Get people in the yes rhythm because most times when you get somebody in the yes rhythm, the conversation flows a little bit easier. The walls come down. There's not so much of a hesitance um, for, for having a conversation and really being open to hearing what you have to say, even if they're not interested. Now, when I say get them into a yes rhythm or, you know, get small yeses throughout the conversation, what I like to do is I like to get the no, the biggest no right up front, right? I know that sounds contradictive, but when I get the biggest no right up front, that lets me know most times what their fears, their concerns, their worries, their doubts, or even their misunderstandings are. And then what I'll do is I'll start confirming what their fears, doubts, worries, misunderstandings are, and I'll check for clarification. So what you're telling me is that, you know, you really don't need someone to cut your yard, um, X, Y, Z, because, you know, you can do it yourself, you, you have to blah, 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 whatever, right? Is that correct? Yes, all right, or what you're saying is you're afraid of having a commitment, you know, or me um, doing your landscape may not come through, blah, 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 because the racial relationship's not established yet, is that correct? Yes. Boom. So now you're getting small yeses throughout, right? Yes, and especially in sales, feels a lot better than no's. But you want to get the no. You want to get the objection right up front, I personally believe. The third thing is take advantage of listening. This is the biggest, most crucial process of any sales, right? Um, I've been in the process of sales before, and the answer had been no. Straight up, I really don't want to have a conversation with you blah, 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 X, Y, Z. I'm not interested in what you're selling me. You know, straight negative from the jump. Um, and I was able to attack their objections up front. And then I just shut up. I just listen. I let them talk, right? In sales, the first person to speak is the one who loses, right? So don't worry about the awkward silence. If there's an awkward silence, let there be an awkward silence. Don't try to overcome that. Um, just go ahead and get into it. 
And is that on my face? Okay. Spit building up. So go ahead and get into it, right? Don't worry about, you know, trying to answer first because they're thinking something in their mind. And that's why you have two ears and one mouth. Speak less, listen more. There's a lot of value in listening. Your client, your customer, your prospect is going to tell you so much um, in the while they speak. And all you have to do is listen. Listen and absorb, right? Don't just be there staring at them like this. And you speak and it's completely opposite of what they said because now you lost them. Barriers go back up and you, you know, you got to kind of fight to kind of break, break those walls back down. So be attentive. Listen, 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 listen. Listen, Linda. The next thing, man, is choose a partner approach, right? I don't want to come to sell you anything. I want to help you accomplish whatever it is that you're looking for. Right. So again, in the first video, uh, where I talked about introduction to sales, kind of talked about uh, the Honda and the, and the Audi or whatever car I use in that video. But don't take a person from what they're interested in into something they're completely not interested in. Right. Sometimes you can do what's called emotion over logic. Right. And you can kind of get a person real built up emotionally and they'll make purchases that are probably outside of their means financially, probably outside of what they was expecting to get all because you built them up emotionally. And that's, that works. That really does work, but you got to be very cautious with doing that. And if you're going to do that, make sure you do the emotion over logic in the area already in which they're looking, right? Uh, because you don't want to go out here taking advantage of people, man, because you still got to go home and sleep at night and think about karma, man. You go out, you treat people good. People go out, talk good about you. That brings you more business, right? So don't worry about the biggest dollar up front. Just do good business practices throughout the process and the money will come. So the partner approach is, hey, listen, you know, miss whoever, Mr. Whatever, you know, how can I help you today? What is it that you're interested in? What is it that you're looking for? Boom. They explain those things to you. Perfect. Um, let me just show you around, you know, and uh, I'm going to point out some things to you. You let me know if that's what you're looking for, if that's what you're interested in. And if not, I'll help you find exactly what, you, what you're looking for. And if I don't have it here, I'll make sure that you know, we, we have a way to get it, right? Take the partner approach. Don't just look at them as the customer, right? Because now what happens is subconsciously, subconsciously excuse me, you start thinking about how can I force them to, to purchase, right? How can I be pushy and aggressive because I need to get this sale. I need to get this sale. I need to get this sale. At that point, you start thinking about the money. You start thinking about the numbers over the person. And once you start doing that, there's so many other things in that conversation that you're going to start to miss, right? So take the partner approach. Another thing I like to say is put yourself in their shoes, man. Let's be real. All right. How many times have anybody ever came up to you or has anybody ever come up to you and try to sell you something and they super push it? They super like, you know, super aggressive, you know, don't really listen to what you're asking for. You say, I want, I want a blue car. Then they go take you to, you know, a yellow car or something like that. Or you say, I want a two story home, then they take you to a one story building. I really gotta think about things like that because how many times has that frustrated you in the process? Like, well, boom, if you can't listen to me, I would have been better off doing it myself or talking to somebody else. So don't be that person. Put yourself in their shoes, make that customer feel comfortable. Um, make, make, make them understand and let them know that you really, you're really listening to them. You're really there to help them out and not just get your sale, get your commission or whatever it is. Next thing, man, and this is crucial, absolutely crucial. Put the people first and put the money second. Listen, good business practices. I keep telling y'all this. I'm going to keep telling y'all this. Good business practices. You want to put the people first. By putting people first, man, and putting money second, I'm telling you, the money is going to come by default. As long as you are doing good things, sometimes people do succeed. I'll be honest, by putting money first. Sharks, savages, snakes, they don't care what happens to the customer, what happens to the client. It is what it is as long as I get mine. Some people really think that, some people really believe that, and that's a lot of sales people's approach. But for you all that are watching Table of Entrepreneurs, man, I wanna challenge y'all to do things the right way and put yourself out there and be different, right? Treat people the way you want to be treated. And again, put people first. People people know, right? People pay attention to that. And if you put them first, man, and establish that relationship, you'd be amazed at what happens and what, what doors may open uh, through the networks and you know, the contacts that you'll be able to get just because you did right by them, right? A lot of times uh, when I was doing sales, I would get referrals from people that I did business with all because they were like, hey, man, 
um, I want to I want to put you on, you know, with my other person or whatever because you did such a great job with me. Um, they also looking for this. Da, da da da. I know that you'll be a good fit for them, right? So things like that, man. Treat people right. Put people first. Money second, and money will come. Money will come abundantly. Believe that. And the last thing I want to talk to y'all about before we recap is to mimic the emotional environment, right? So sometimes, sometimes you can come out really ecstatic, right? Yo, man, what's going on? How you doing, right? So you can be really amped up, right? And then that can draw the emotion up in the conversation for a person who may not be as, you know, lively as you. However, if they come in and they get excited, don't you be like, hey, how's everything going? How can I help you? Because now they're like, yo, man, come on, what's going on, man? Put that, put that frown upside down. And he's like, oh, yeah, I got you, man. You know, I'm just here trying to make it through the day. But, you know, what I'm saying, what, what can I do for you? Right. Try to match the energy. I mean, don't be fake. Right. Don't be fake. But do try to match the emotional environment because energy attracts like energy. Right. So if your energy is not able to match with your clients, your customers, your prospects energy, then they may move on to somebody else. So let's go ahead and recap what we talked about today. Today, we covered uh, strategies for mastering sales. The first thing we talked about is eliminating the anxiety. Same thing we talked about is the score is small. Yes. Throughout the conversation, uh, throughout the sales experience. Also, take advantage of listening, right? One of the most valuable steps that you could do. Also, choose the partner approach. Please, people, please, please, please. Put a star, asterisk, underline, circle, highlight. Choose the partner approach. You'll get a lot further by doing that. Next thing you want to do is put yourself in their shoes. Kind of visualize how they, how you would think if you were on the other side. Also, put people first and money second. And then lastly, mimic the emotional environment. Hey, listen. I'm gonna put y'all on on how to be great salespeople. All you gotta do is take notes, go out, apply these things. And again, leave some comments in the description below, man. I would love to hear from y'all. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, share this, man. And as always, here at Table of Entrepreneurs, man, we're breaking limitations. Where not only do you have a seat at the table, but I want you to know that the table is yours. Until next time.